Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and today we're going to discuss hypothermia. Oh, go away. Right, so today we we're going to discuss hypothermia. Um, hypothermia, for the most part, is the cooling of the body faster than it can generate heat in its simplest form. Uh, ways that we lose heat are through radiation, such as having an uncovered head. Conduction, sitting on a cold ground without having a, you know, a layer of insulation between you and the cold ground. Convection, not having a wind shell. And then lastly, evaporation, which is no more than simple breathing. Now, there's four stages to hypothermia, and we'll go over those now. Ahead. All right, so we were discussing hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia actually has four stages. And in the early stage of it, we have a body temperature about 98.6, and it goes down to about 95 degrees. The first thing that winds up happening is your body starts to shiver, and you start to feel cold. And that's the body trying to compensate. It's trying to rewarm itself. Uh, this is usually followed with a little bit of confusion and loss of coordination. You won't be able to do a manual. <laughs> you won't be able to do a manual dexterity test. Maybe I'm a little hypothermic right now. Who knows? <laughs> so, <clears throat> following the early stages, we have the middle stage, and that's when the body is down to uh, 95 degrees, and it drops down to about 90 degrees. What's going to wind up happening is the body starts to violently shiver. They're, it's an uncontrollable shiver, all right, and you're trying to, you know, get warm again. Uh, there is difficulty speaking, and <clears throat> there's impaired judgment. You're not really thinking too, uh, too clearly. So then we finally we move on to the late middle stage, which is when you're at 90 degrees, and then your body drops down to about 86 degrees. The body cannot have, it, it doesn't have the ability anymore to rewarm itself, all right? All shivering stops, all right? It can't keep itself warm anymore. <clears throat> Their muscles become very rigid, all right? An individual can't speak anymore. How are you doing? How are you doing? An individual can't speak anymore. You're going to see the skin start to become cyanotic or actually start to turn blue. All right, and the pulse and the respirations of the individual or yourself are going to slow down dramatically. All right. <clears throat> hey, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? In the very late stages of hypothermia, we're down to 86 degrees to about 78 degrees. All right. At this time, the person is usually going to wind up being unconscious. They're going to be very unresponsive. You're not going to get a response out of them. All right. The pulse and the respirations may be so faint that you don't even feel them or see them. And then finally, if the body drops down to below 78 degrees, what usually accompanies that is respiratory failure, heart failure, and then finally death. All right? So what are the things that we can do to combat that? We'll do over that. All right. So what can we do about hypothermia? Well, the biggest thing, biggest thing with hypothermia is early detection and avoidance, all right? We're going to wear our proper clothing, all right? Proper clothing that helps keep us warm and dry, all right? And we're going to continue with layering, all right? The whole basis behind layering is so that we can remove layers as we get hotter, all right? You don't want to overheat. You don't want to perspire. You don't want to sweat. You're going to, to some extent, but you need to be able to combat that and you need to regulate your body's core temperature by taking off layers. All right? Protect yourself from the wind, from water, and from surfaces that are cold. All right? A couple of other things. There is nothing wrong with going home. You know, I know that every one of us would push ourselves to, you know, to the extremes at times and whatnot like that. But you know what? We can't control, you know, things that happen to us. 
but we can certainly control the, the severity of what happens to us by doing a little bit of prep and using common sense. And one of those things may just be going home, packing up and saying, you know, the heck with this. You know, I'm too cold. I got to go home. You know, so you may want to take that into consideration. I mean, I've sat out in a tree stand way too many times, been way too cold by the time I got in, and it was a bear trying to climb down out of the stand, you know, with your fingers and everything just freezing up. So, you know, you don't want to do that. <clears throat> so, and then lastly, when you're on the trail and you're, you're out and you're doing things, don't forget to eat, drink, and move. Right? You don't want to be stagnant too much and, and sitting down in an area. Right? You want to be moving around a little bit, right? generating that heat. doesn't matter. Move your arms around. Move your feet around. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your fingers. Things like that. Get yourself moving. Get the blood flowing. All right? You're eating. Your body's a furnace. Okay? Your body's a furnace. You put something in it, you're going to digest. It's going to help keep you warm. You know, this is where, you know, eating spam and, you know, as bad as it is for you, go ahead and eat the spam. You know, get some gorp, you know, some, you know, high caloric fruitcake, things of that nature. Uh, and then always remember to hydrate yourself. All right. You're going through water as much as you do. And, you know, the summertime, you're going through that the liquids in your body and you have to remember to drink. All right. If you're not pissing, you're not hydrating. It's just as simple as that. So that's our discussion today for hypothermia, you know. I hope you take some precautions and everything else. Trust me, it's cold out here today. Uh, I got the bomber on. I got the, the rabbit fur bomber. So if I'm wearing that, you know it's pretty cold. Right, dog? So this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. I thank you for your views and your comments. And until the next one, walk the woods. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, talker boy? You know.